Beth is joining us. Okay, awesome. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are live in EXP Family Tree like we always are. So if you're watching there, hi to you guys. Make sure that you chat below the live stream if you want, and I'll watch for um, any questions you have that we can answer towards the end or ongoing as well. Um, but if you can join us via Zoom, we'd love to have you do that. So it's just my Zoom link, which is the same link for every single Monday, Wednesday, all the things that you guys join for uh, me here at EXP Family Tree. We will also have this uploaded on YouTube if you are not with EXP so you can't go back and watch the live stream, don't worry, because we're going to go ahead and put it out on my YouTube channel so that you can uh, watch it there or you can share it with somebody who's not with our company that would get some value from this. So um, that is the process of every single Wednesday call. Just a reminder, we do this every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, calculate your own time zone, and we bring in guests from all across the country with different areas of expertise. They are doing things um, in a different way. It's successful and we're bringing it to you so that you can continue to learn from others who are willing to share anything and everything with you guys in part of this uh, culture of EXP so that you can take this information and maybe do something with it that resonates with you, your personality, your local uh, market, uh, market, et cetera. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and today we have a special guest. I'm actually very excited because this is going to be the first time that I get to hear, uh, you know, from you as well, Satyra. I mean, we've talked before, but I haven't been able to go to any of your trainings. And so I'm just as excited and anticipation. I think we're going to learn some pretty amazing things. And before we get started, I just wanted to share something short with you guys. And I'm saying your name, right? Correct. Satyra. Yep. Satyra. Yeah. Okay. I had a second thought for some reason and I thought I better ask because if I'm saying it three times in a row, she's going to be mad at me. <laughs> Satyra Moore is a social media influencer and she has been so for the vacation town of Branson, Missouri. If you guys don't know where that is, you should check it out. If you've thought about buying investment properties, Branson, Missouri is one of the best places in the country to do so. Um, and she's been providing valuable resources for about her community for visitors and residents for a number of years. And she fosters relationships in the community through social gatherings. She's also set herself up as an authority for her area. And she is leveraging her impact to attract clients as a new agent with EXP. Um, make sure you follow her on Facebook or TikTok. All you need to do is check out, check her name. You can see it here on Zoom. Satyra Loves Branson. Just search that out. Make sure you guys follow her. Do that now if you haven't already done that. Um, I'm excited about this conversation because you really built up a name for yourself and you were the social media influencer for your town. Also forming relationships, doing social gatherings, doing events, and really becoming, um, you know, a lot of people in real estate will call it like a mayor of your town, but for you more an influencer, someone who loves where they live and is able to really share that opportunity with others. And you did that before you got into real estate. So I'm excited to hear how utilizing what you've done in the past is now helping you in real estate, because those of us that are already in real estate certainly could do it the other way around. And so it's going to be a great conversation. We're excited to hear from you today, you guys. The name of the topic was lead your community through social media and special events. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, those of you that are on Zoom, please raise your hand and um, you know make this as interactional as possible. So I'm going to let you take it away, Satyra. Thank you so very much, Carrie. I really appreciate you having me on today. Um, anytime that I've talked to anybody about Carrie, it seems like you are the woman who has the Midas touch. Everybody who think, who talks about you has nothing but positive things to say about you and the energy you bring um, to every room you walk into, uh, to every Zoom meeting you walk into. Um, so I just want to take a minute to say thank you so much for letting me come on here today. And I hope that this is beneficial for somebody. Uh, like you said, my name is Satyra. It's a difficult name. Nobody ever gets this name right. It is really... Um, <laughs> um, but it's unique and it's something to talk about. Um, anytime, you know, I can have that conversation with somebody, um, it's a good icebreaker. So, uh, so yeah, definitely an interesting name that I have here. Is there a story behind your name, Satyra? Oh yeah. Um, uh, my mom went to church with a lady whose name was Satyra and my mom was a teenage mother. Um, and some of her actions got her shunned from the church. And there was one woman in particular who was beyond gracious and kind to her and her name was Satyra. And so she died around the time I was born. And so naturally my mom wanted to name me after her. So 
that is the story behind my name. I don't really know where she got her name. Um, it doesn't have a, obviously there's not a ton of people running around with that name. Yeah. Um, I do think it is popular in uh, the Middle East. Okay. I've told that um, in some Indian cultures, it means star. So, oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. That's a beautiful story. Actually. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, first of all, I'm not sure that I'm the best teacher in the world, but I feel like I am generous with showing people what I know and I like to learn alongside with others. So hopefully people will bring something away from here. Um, so as you stated, I am a social media media influencer. I am on my two main ones are TikTok and Facebook. On um, TikTok, I have almost 84,000 followers. On Facebook, I think it's around uh, 37 or 38 thousand followers now. Um, so am I like Michaela with 5 million followers? No, but I do feel like I have a pretty good following. I can no longer go eat dinner in Branson, Missouri without being inundated by people who want to come up and talk to me. And so, um, that's a very new and interesting thing in my life. Um, so I started doing this, um, I guess it's been about two and a half years ago now I've been doing this. Um, I, a little bit about me, I'm 44 years old or I'm turning 44 day after tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I'm turning 44. Um, I've been married for 26 years to my husband, Joshua. We have two grown kids. Um, we have ran a successful, uh, roofing company since 2013 in Oklahoma. Um, I'm not even from Branson. And when I started this Branson TikTok, um, I certainly did not live here. I lived five hours away. So a lot of people don't know that. I'm going to turn my heat off here in the office. If you'll give me just a second. Sorry, that was getting hot. I got it. All right. So, um, so yeah, so I started uh, doing this two years ago um, and it's just been a wild ride. And let me tell you, if I can do this, anybody can do this. Um, I have severe ADHD. I get distracted, squirrel, everything's crazy. Um, so if I can do a TikTok about a town that I don't even live in, I have confidence that anybody else can totally crush it. It just takes some dedication and a little bit of knowledge. Um, so here's kind of what I thought we would do today. Um, I thought that I would tell you a little bit about myself and how I got started in TikTok. And then um, we could talk about how I am becoming a voice of authority in Branson through um, not just social media, but through uh, community events. And this is something that we did for our roofing company. And this is something that I did when I became the director of a homeschool co-op and I wanted to create a larger community there. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with having social gatherings. And so um, uh, now I'm bringing that into real estate by, by doing open houses and different things like that. So we'll talk about that for a little bit. Um, and then I thought I would show you what my TikTok account looks like. Um, I would love to show you my first video and how it's drastically changed to what I do now. Um, it's completely different. When you start out, you have no clue what you're doing. And so I thought that might be fun. Um, so um, I'm going to tell you how I post on different platforms. Each platform kind of wants something different. Um, and then I'm going to talk about some ideas for your social media channels, um, not you in particular, Carrie, but for just anybody who wants to do um, some sort of uh, social media. Um, and then I thought it would be good to just open it up to answer any questions that you guys have um, and deep dive into what you guys want. Um, because really, I can't meet your needs if I don't know what your needs are. Does that make sense? Um, and so um, if people have questions during this, I would love for you to put it in the comment box. And then Carrie, can you watch that comment box? And if we have questions pop up, perfect. Um, and then um, Carrie, don't hesitate to stop me through this at all and say, hey, uh, let's deep dive more into this. Or can you explain that more or tell me more about anything? Um, I think that a lot of people learn more through conversational learning than just getting a lecture. 
Um, so I would absolutely love at any time you guys just raise your hand and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what we can do to to get you helped out. Um, so like I said, um, or like Carrie said, I am a brand new agent to EXP. I actually am so new that I have not sold a house yet. I have a listing, um, but I am like brand new baby behind, wet behind the ears. Um, I have, I'm learning things every single day. Um, so I am brand new to EXP, brand new to real estate, um, but I stay on brand new to real estate. I have flirted with real estate my whole life. So my grandmother was a real estate agent. Um, when I was little, I was heavily influenced by going to work with her. She would buy homes and she would rehab them and turn around and sell them. She basically did the Burr method um, back in the 70s and 80s before it was a popular thing for everybody to do. Um, so that has been hugely influential on me. And as an adult, that's what we've done. We buy gross houses. We live in them for a year or two, completely rehab them, and then, you know, make a huge chunk, chunk of, ca of cash before we sell them off. Um, and how I got involved with EXP is actually through buying short-term rental properties. Um, so that's kind of um, my connection with EXP. Uh, I'll get to more uh, more about that in a minute. Um, so I've done insurance adjusting in 13 different states. My husband and I have owned a roofing company in Oklahoma since 2013. Um, and then I homeschooled my kids through the roofing company and through the homeschool. Um, I was able to really create large communities through social events. That has been a really, really big thing for me is making sure that I connect with people in the community so I can grow whatever business I have my hand in. Um, and as real estate agents, I think that's always a goal that people are looking for. How can I ex expand my reach? How can I network more? Um, and when it comes to doing those two things, I feel like I've got those things cornered. Not very many things in my life I can look at and think, oh yeah, I've got this down pat. But uh, if you want to you want to have a party, I'm your girl. If you want to make a video, I've got you. So, um, so yeah, let me uh, go through my notes and see where I am now. Um, so there's two things that when you do either social media or events, um, there's a few things that it will do. Number one, it's going to bring you recognition. Um, and number two, it will bring you in business. It will create ways that you can funnel people to come towards you. Um, and then one thing that I didn't expect through social media was the community that I would, I mean, it's called social media, but I didn't realize how social I would become, how many business leaders I would be in contact with every day, um, and the really close friendships that would come out of this. Um, one of the things that I do is I host a monthly event with women here in Branson. Um, it's women entrepreneurs, people who are doing um, different type of business leadership. And this could be maybe you're a owner of a restaurant, or maybe you're in a big show in town, or maybe you manage a large attraction in town. If you're a woman who is an entrepreneur in Branson, I want to connect with you and I want you to come to one of my parties. And so that's one thing that I do that's huge. Um, definitely has been a game changer for me for meeting people in our community and for creating really strong friendships. Um, and so that has just been absolutely incredible. I learned pretty quickly when I started doing different parties and things like that, that people are lonely. Um, we live in a world where we have a lot of screen time. Um, you know, a lot of people, when they go to work, um, you know, it's just you in an office working on things, um, or a lot of people are working for, from home these days. Um, and so the world can be a pretty lonely place. If you can give people an environment where they can come out and have fun and engage with other people, that can be really life-changing for them. Um, and it's beneficial for you as well. So that's, um, that's huge. That's huge for me. That's a big goal that I have when I, when I do these social events. Um, and my husband and I, like I said, we've been doing, um, different types of parties for years. 
Um, when we were first married, our parties were well known throughout town for um, not appropriate reasons. <laughs> um, I think we liked to, uh, let me back that up because I feel <laughs> like that sounded not right. Um, <laughs> so there was a lot of drinking going on um, at our party. Um, uh, so we were known for having just rager parties back in the day. Um, and then, you know, we kind of grew up and we grew out of that and our rager parties turned into a Bible study. Um, and it was not uncommon for Tuesday nights at the Moore house. There would be at least 35 people packed into our living room, people sitting on the floor everywhere, um, having having Bible study and that went on for years and it was a huge success and um, we made really good connections and we brought all of our friends that we used to booze it up with to our Bible study um, and we saw lots of life change through um, through that and so um, so yeah we've had some experience with having um, different parties throughout the year um, then when when I got involved in the homeschool community I realized that moms needed a way to connect without their kids present. Um, and so I started creating different events for those homeschool moms to go to. Um, and then through that, I was able to um, develop my own homeschool co-op and have hundreds of kids go there. And so that was super exciting. Um, so along the way, I've learned a lot about hosting a party and growing connections. And this is somebody something anybody can do. Um, it, it will allow you to work in a very authentic way with people. Um, whereas social media is oftentimes, you know, the lighting is just perfect and you've got your hair done just right and everything, you know, is perfect. Um, when you meet with people and you connect with them at a party, they see the real you. They're oftentimes in my house. They know what my kitchen looks like. They see that I have junk mail piled up over on the corner of my bar. They can see that I have a big pimple on my face over here. Um, um, so you get to be a very authentic person when you have these um, in-person connections, which is completely different from social media. Um, so I'm going to talk right now about the parties that I'm currently doing in Branson and give you some tips if you want to start doing your own sort of social connection um, networking events. Um, number one, I do parties every Monday. Um, at the first of the month. I didn't do one last month because um, it was the new year. People were, it's the down season here. A lot of people were going to be gone. I do my parties on a Monday. I never do my parties on a weekend because think about the weekend for you guys. It's your time off of work. Uh, you need to go do your grocery shopping. You need to do your laundry or on a Friday and Saturday night, you guys have plans. You don't want to come to somebody's party when you've already got something else going on. Um, a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday are the best times of the week to do these. I do mine on a Monday only because in Branson, um, everything is closed on Mondays, um, especially during the off season. But even um, during the peak of the season, lots of restaurants, um, they are are closed on Mondays. And so Mondays just seems to be a good day for Branson, but for most places, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday are probably going to be your best bet. I do my um, meetings currently are just women entrepreneurs. Like I said, um, it's people who lead businesses here in Branson. Um, and then I make sure to tell people, Hey, this event is going to last two hours. Uh, it's normally from six to eight. And at eight o'clock, I really boot people out the door. I let everybody know, hey, thanks so much for coming. We're going to wrap up. Um, if you'd like to grab a box of leftovers, you know, grab some punch for the road, whatever it is, two hour mark. I'm respecting their time um, and I'm making sure that I don't lose my mind and that I'm going to get good sleep and go to work tomorrow on time. Um, and so that's really, really big for me. Uh, to do that two hour limit. Um, I put this on the invitation. And then if I have personal um, connections with somebody, whether I'm texting them or talking to them in person, I make sure to reiterate, hey, two hours. Um, one of the things I always do at our parties is I offer um, a cocktail. Um, a lot of times it could be um, just some wine that I have or one specialty drink. I don't go crazy with the alcohol and I always make sure to add things that are not alcoholic um, at every party I do. Um, I always offer some sort of food. 
food is a way for people to connect. People go crazy about food. If you can offer them food, they super love it. And I always tell people what kind of food I'm going to have. Um, whether it's charcuterie, whether we're going to have finger food, whether I'm going all out and making something fancy, um, whether I'm, you know, just making lasagna, whatever it is, I try to let them know that way they know, okay, I probably need to eat before I get there or I, they can make plans accordingly. I really want to respect their, um, I want to respect the person who's coming as much as possible and let them know exactly what they're walking into, because there is nothing worse than walking into a room and not knowing what you're walking into. I had a meeting yesterday with a guy who owns a company here in town and he was like, Hey, I want to meet with you and I want to buy you lunch. And he didn't tell me what he wanted. And I was like, um, what am I walking into? This is super weird. Like, I'm not sure, you know? And so I was like, can I bring my husband? What is this going to be? You know? And it ended up being a great lunch, but I walked into it feeling super awkward because I had no clue, no clue what I was walking into. So I always want to respect them and let them know exactly what the expectations are. That is super, super huge. Um, let's see here. Um, also another big tip. If you tell somebody to bring something to one of your parties, they actually have to show up. So, um, you know, if you want people to actually come to your party, just say, Hey, when they say, yeah, I'll make it. Just say, great. Bring cups. Not can you bring cups, bring cups, bring napkins, bring plates, something like that. Then they feel like they are required to show up to your event with whatever it is that you told them to do. And a lot of people get nervous. They're like, well, I don't know if I could have a party at my house um, because I don't have X, Y, Z. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what you do or don't have at your house. They don't care if your house is the cleanest. They don't care if your house is a little dirty. I mean, you know, clean the toilet before we come over to your house, you know, make sure that the, the sink isn't piled up with dishes, but it does not have to be perfect. The fact that you went out of your way to invite somebody into your home, into your personal space, that really speaks volumes to people. Um, currently here in Branson, I don't have a house to host these parties in. So I've been hosting it at different people's Airbnbs who have asked me to like come and review their Airbnb or um, restaurants who have wanted me to come and review their restaurants. And so it's been kind of awkward for me. But personally, now that I know the power of having a party in my own house, it's the go-to for me. Now, now that I know the power that that holds with other people, how they feel intimately connected with me because they've been to my house, that is, um, that's definitely powerful. And so, um, so yeah, when people come to my parties, one thing that I always do that people think is crazy is I like for them to wear a name tag. Um, unless it's just a small group of people that I know, but the whole point of these parties is to grow and network. So there's always a number of people that I don't know, or maybe I've met them and I can't remember where I know them from. And most of them don't know each other in the beginning. So wearing a name tag seems like so cheesy and stupid, but I always make sure that everybody wears a name tag. Um, I try to do some sort of group icebreaker where we go around the room, say your name, who you work for, and you know what your favorite food is what your favorite christmas movie is what you ate for breakfast this morning whatever question it is just something to get people talking um and then i let people mix and mingle and then normally at toward the end of the party or sometimes even at the beginning i will have people go around the room and or break off into groups and i will have them say one thing that they need and let me give an example I need a dog groomer or I need a lady who can do my nails. I'm not satisfied with the girl I have right now. Everybody at the party is going to have a need. Everybody has a need, whether it's something really stupid, whether it's something really fun, everybody has something that they need. And this is a great way to get women in the room talking and to get conversation going and to get needs met. And here's what I found when people leave my house, I'm standing at the door and I can say, Carrie, thank you so very much for coming tonight. It really means the world that you came to my party. Thank you so much for giving your, me your time. And I hope that that dog groomer that Lisa gave you, I hope that works out. Let me know if that works out because I'd love to take my dog there too. It helps me continue the conversation and make that personal connection with people. And so um, I think I forgot to say earlier, um, I have a psychology degree. So 
the psyche and and making personal connections um, and and using mental I don't know what the word I'm looking for is <laughs> it's not mental blackmail Lisa says mental blackmail but not blackmail but helping to connect better through um you know through psychology um that's one thing that I super super love um so so yeah and then um I always remind people of a party two weeks before um I let them know and normally it's like I don't even give them the place I'm just like hey don't forget Monday in two weeks we're having a party it's going this month is going to be galentine theme more details to follow and then one week before you get the address you get the time you get some details and then three days before you get even more details um, and then of course the day of I try to maybe text or talk to the people or put out something on Facebook and let people know hey don't forget tonight this is what we're doing um, and so that is definitely something that you're going to want to do is, is keep on reminders because people will forget. We are a forgetful bunch. Um, let me see here. Where is my next? Oh, always get contact information from these people when you ask them to the party. And if you didn't get it then when they're at the party, because at the end of the day, you want to grow your network, you want to grow your list of contacts. Um, and it's a great way for you to be able to communicate with people um, when you're going to have a party in the future. Um, so definitely never forget uh, any chance you can to grab content, content information. So uh, let's see here. Um, let's see where I am. All right. So there is an incredible book that I read uh, last year about throwing a two hour cocktail party. And I felt like I've always had great parties, but I feel like this took my party game from yeah to yeah. Um, it's called The Two Hour Cocktail Party by a gentleman named Nick Gray. Um, and right now I'm gonna share my screen. There we go. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. All right, so let's go over. If you can just open up a new tab on your computer, you're going to go to YouTube and I want you to type in Nick Gray two hour cocktail party. And this is what he looks like. And this is the video that I want you to go. Find. I can't see the screen. Let's try that again. No. Hmm. So if the bottom says share screen, the one that's already highlighted when it pops up is the right one. Can you see it now? Mm -mm. Weird. That is so crazy. Yeah, it's not working for some reason. Okay. Well, I'm just going to walk you through it. Yeah. And mentally fine. visualize where I'm going. <laughs> okay, go slow. Start from the beginning. Okay. So you're going to go to YouTube. I have it up. I can share my screen if you want me to play it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Angie can share a screen and you can talk her through it. Let's yeah. try it. Let's see if it works. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it is the one where he has on the yellow hat. Okay. This is an incredible, incredible resource. He can Hello, tell you everybody. That is him. He is doing an interview with somebody else and he's going to talk about the book and it is so, so good. He is, you need to get this book if you're going to have parties, if you want to create yourself to be a networking queen in your community or king in your community, um, this is what you want to do for sure. So definitely check that out. And now let's close that and let's go back to our regular screen. Come back to me. And, um, so yeah, go, go look at that book. And now speaking of media, we are going to go look at my social media. If I can get the share screen to work, let's see what we can do here. It may be a Mac thing. I don't know. Can you guys see it? Are you seeing my screen? Oh. This is going to be a super bummer if this doesn't work. I don't understand why it worked in the beginning and then it left me. Let's see here.
Can you see it now? Yes, it's sharing. Yay. All right. All right. Thank perfect. You. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, so this is my um, social media page. This is uh, my TikTok. Um, and so everybody, if you will grab your phone, um, if you have TikTok, open the TikTok app. If you have Facebook, open the Facebook app, or you can go to um, Instagram. Uh, you will find me at any of those search Satira Loves Branson. And I'll spell my name for you because I know it's mighty difficult. Um, it is S. A T I R A H. And then you're just going to put in the words loves Branson. You should be able to find me. These videos that I have right here should be what you're looking at. Um, and so as you can see, I have, um, okay. If you're on Instagram, you're not going to see very many followers. That is the one place that I, for some reason, just have not been able to put, uh, to put enough effort in maybe, um, to, to gain a huge following. Um, but, um, on Facebook and on TikTok, you will see that I have several, several followers. Um, and so what I do with this media channel is I show people fun things to do, see and eat in Branson, Missouri. And so I go around town and um, if a place has a good Google rating uh, and they have a great reputation, I go in, I eat dinner there, or if it's an activity, I do that activity. I just record little clips as I go through and then I put those clips together. I normally do a voiceover um, and I show people, you know, um, what there is to do in Branson. So I am going to show you guys that my team is laughing probably because they're in the videos and they just realized what they look like uh, when I post them on TikTok. Um, so um, I am going to show you, uh, uh, let's see here. What is a good video that I have done lately? Um, this is a good one. If I can right get now it's the off season in Branson and a lot of people don't know what that means. During the winter months, Branson really slows down. Almost all of the shows shut down, outdoor activities are closed, even Silver Dollar City shuts down and doesn't open back up until spring. A lot of people who own businesses take this time to go on vacation. Restaurants and hotels will be- You get the point. So I'm just telling people what they can expect when they come here. Um, let me show you another one that I've done. At this new restaurant called the Mythical Witch. It's located in downtown Branson, Missouri, where Dimitri's used to be. The decor is so cute and the food was yummy. The theme is mythical creatures and it's a sandwich shop, hence the name Mythical Witch. They had a ton of sandwiches to choose from, all with mythical names. And the staff here was really, really nice. And have I mentioned the decor? I ended up getting a tomato soup and a cosmic ranch chicken sandwich. And look how they left me a little note on the box. This is what I paid for it. I was so excited for this place to open. It is brought to you by the same people who have Get It Tasted. That's the barbecue place I love. Okay, you guys get the point. So I'm just showing people this restaurant that I went to. Um, and so I do restaurants. I do um, activities through town. I do walking trails. I do anything that people would do when they come to our town. Um, I do videos on there. Um, and I started this TikTok channel, uh, about two and a half years ago. And as you can see, I now have 83.8 thousand followers. Um, I don't have millions and millions of followers. It takes a lot of time and dedication, uh, to even get what I got here. Um, and so how I got to even making this post or making this, um, making TikTok videos in the first place is um, my daughter, we came to vacation in Branson for years and my daughter started going to a college here and I started coming up, I don't know, once a month, every six weeks and just seeing her. And while we were here, we'd go do something fun. And I would tell my friends, oh, I did this in Branson or, oh, I did that in Branson. Um, and then I was on a girl's trip in Dallas, Texas. And somebody said to me, um, you should start a TikTok channel. You should show us what there is to do in Branson. And I started thinking about it. There were no influencers covering the Branson, Missouri area. And I thought, I should do that. Yeah, because I, 
nobody else is doing it. And I do stuff there all the time. I could show people what I'm doing. And in the back of my mind, I thought, okay, my mom's going to watch this. Uh, my best friend is going to watch this. Um, some of the people in my networking clicks might watch this, um, but I don't know who else is going to watch this, uh, but maybe a few people will watch this. And I thought I might get a few thousand people. I never thought that it would become what it is today. And so that was something that um, it was expected, but not expected. Um, and so it's been a really, really interesting ride. Um, and when I first started TikTok, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. I was afraid to show my face. Um, the videos that I did were just either photos or clips and then had text on the screen. And they were like 30 seconds long and it was just random photos and video clips. Um, and then as time got went on, I thought, well, okay, I'm going to put my voice on one. And so I did a voiceover and that one did really good. And I was like, okay. And I do have a background of, um, I did commercials when I was in high school and then I've done all of our radio commercials for our business throughout the years. And so I did have a little bit of experience with media type stuff. Um, but I wasn't a huge, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just starting out. Um, as a matter of fact, for three months before I even did my TikTok, I researched it out. Um, I took a online class that showed me how to cut TikTok clips and how to add the sound and how to do the voiceover. Um, and now, very interestingly, I do not use a lick of information from that class. None of it. I don't edit. I don't create my videos in TikTok anymore. Um, I create them in a another application so that I can put them out. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, but um, I rarely use trends. Um, I know that people talk about trends all the time. They assume that I'm watching trends and I'm seeing what I can do. I just go out there and I do what a vacationer would do because I really know that that is my audience. I know that my audience is generally women, because that's who, if they're coming to Branson, that's who's making the vacation plans. I know that my audience is between 30 and 55 is my main target audience. I know that they are uh, a middle income class. Um, I know that most of them have kids and they're looking for kids activities. Um, but I do get about 25% of my followers um, who are couples looking for couple things to do. Um, but knowing who my audience is really tells me what kind of content I need to be making. And so if you're looking to moving forward with doing any type of social media, you have to know who your audience is. If you don't know who you're talking to and you don't know what they need, you are like a shotgun and you don't need to be a shotgun. You need to be a sniper rifle. You need to be hitting your mark every time. And so that is something that I tell people all the time, know your audience and know what they need. If you're just getting on TikTok to make goofy videos and to be silly, there are millions and millions of creators doing that. And your voice is going to get drowned out by all the other voices that are doing that. You have to really figure out why you're doing this, what you're doing, who it's for and what they need. And you have to learn to drill down on those things. Um, I try to bring value in every single video. Every once in a while, I'll do a goofy video and I'm like, what is this? Oh my gosh. You know, but most of my videos are me really giving somebody value. Um, and a lot of people assume that I'm making tons of money doing this. Um, I did meet an influencer the other day and she has about the same following as I do. And she is making a nice, tidy three figure income. Um, but she has to work it as a full-time job. This is just a hobby uh, for me anyway. Um, and so I'm not out there scrambling every day, talking to people, trying to charge them, you know, 500 bucks per video. I'm not trying to, you know, do all these things. Um, everything that I do in these videos, I, all the food I consume, I pay for it. Um, most of the places that I have stayed until the last six months, I paid for myself. 
Um, of course, now I've kind of reached a status in town where people are offering me free things and that's very nice. Um, but I do not make an income off of these people um, that I am doing videos for the business owners. I would never ask a small business to pay me money um, because I feel like I want to use them. I want them to be a client of mine down the road. So that is going to be my payoff. I get the payoff when they either enrich my life by being my friend or they become my client. Um, and so I know that a lot of people think that I should use social media to make a ton of money. And for some people, that's great. If that's what you want to do, you go do it. You go do it. And I have no judgment against those people. Just for me, this is something I do out of the kindness of my heart. I want to uplift other small businesses in Branson and I want them to be my client. I want them to be my friend. I don't want it to just be a business transaction. So authentic. authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa's in the background telling me authentic. And that is at the end of the day, I don't want anybody to think that they can buy my opinion. Um, and I always want to have authentic connections with people. So Yeah. Um, so through, through the social media journey I've been on, I have realized a few things. Um, number one, social media is not for everybody. Um, if you, uh, people who think, um, I don't know how I'm trying to say this. It's just not everybody's cup of tea. And if you, if you have a boss or you have somebody who's telling you, you have to be on TikTok, you have to be on this, you have to do that. And it is just not your authentic want, it's okay to say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go do these social gatherings instead. Now you might probably want to work somewhere else harder. Um, but it, it, not, this is not cut out for everybody. Um, if you are super bad with technology and you're super bad in front of a, a camera, um, you have two things. You can either work at it really hard and you can go do it that way, or you can figure out something else that you can do um, that might be a better use of time. Yes, questions. I see hands raising. Lisa, you're across the room. So you tell me your question. Should I just tell you my voice? Just tell me in your okay. voice and I'll say it back to the... Connect, yeah. So um, my thing with TikTok specifically is that I'm on Instagram a lot and I don't know if I have the time to be putting out my stuff on another platform. Right sure. Now. So Lisa's question was, she is on, um, she is on Instagram right now, but she doesn't know that she has the time to branch out and do Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and this and to do all those. And so I'm going to come back around to those because okay. I've got this in a talking point in just a minute. Jason, I see your hand up. Do you want to unmute and let it rip? Yeah. Um, mine was just really a, a curiosity on the editing process for you. When your videos on, you have two different main styles of videos where you're in a car doing a talking head video, yeah. and then you have some B-roll playing maybe in the background every once in a while. So on those type of videos, are you just kind of off the cuff? Uh, I have an idea of what I want to say. I'm just going to hit record, do a few takes, and then throw in some B-roll that may or may not fit with what I am actually talking about. Yeah. Um. 90% of my content is well thought out. Um, I at least do bullet points, if not a detailed script. Uh, it just depends on if it's something that I know a lot about or if it's something that I'm just don't know a lot about. Um, I very rarely just start rambling. Um, I think I have one video where I was really mad about a timeshare thing that happened here in town and I just hit the record button and I was like, I hate timeshares. And that was me just rambling. Um, but 99% of the time it's me with a, um, you know, I have my script right here or bullet points right here and, um, I'm hitting the record button and I'm saying something into the camera and then I'm looking back over at this and thinking about what I need to say next. And then I'm looking at the camera again and saying what I need to say next. And then I'm pausing and I'm looking for the next thing to say. And then I'm coming back. Um, that's normally how I do it. Or I'm doing a voiceover and I'm just hitting the record button while I'm reading everything that I have here. Um, that's kind of how I do it. Um, and so, so yeah, um, I always try to think it out and, 
and there's times that I have to do the voiceover like 15 times and I'm, you know, there's a mistake in there and I'm irritated and I'm like, you know what, this is good enough. I'm going on. To yeah. Later. On a lot of your voiceover videos, what I've noticed that you do really well is that what you're talking about usually flows with what we're seeing in the background when you have the B-roll footage going over, you know, so you, you know, you want to mention the, the staff. Well, then while you're talking about getting into the dialogue of the staff, you see the staff, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're talking about this burger. Here's the burger that I was talking about. You know what I'm saying? It all flows, makes yeah. sense and, and goes. So as I was curious if on those type of videos, if you're editing the whole video the way you want it, and then you're trying to decide the dialogue that you're going to overlay based on how you final on the final edit, or is it reverse where you have the dialogue and you yeah. purposely edit the video to fit your yeah. dialogue? Um, so we used to call this storybooking, um, and it was where you kind of had a, okay, this is where what I want to talk about. This is the high points. And then I kind of have a script that I want to do. And so if this is my script, I know that somewhere around the 22nd line, I'm going to talk about that hamburger. So I better put that in around 20 seconds. And then as we get the end, I'm going to talk about that uh, staff member that was so great. So probably around the 42nd mark, I'm going to put her in and, you know, um, and then I just kind of go from there. But um, all your dialogue is really kind of based around trying to cram it into a minute, minute and a half or whatever yes. the, the limit yeah. is. Mm. Yeah. And if wow. I have more content, more content than that, um, I will make it a part one and a part two. Gotcha. Um, and the reason why is number one, I have bad ADHD and I personally cannot watch, a um, like a 20 minute YouTube video. I just can't do that. Um, that drives me, I will get up after five minutes and I'm unloading the dishwasher and I'm doing this and I'm not watching what's in front of me. Um, so I typically, it's not what I watch. It's not what I consume. And so I'm just doing what I feel comfortable with. Um, and so I know your videos are great because you've got them all and it looks great. And you go on for a long time and I'll be honest, I watch your videos and after five minutes, I'm like, I got to pause and I'll come watch that later because I can't sit still that long. Um, and so even if I had, if I had to edit a video that was longer than a minute, minute and a half, no, I would lose interest. I would lose interest and I would be somewhere else. And so, um, so that's really why they're a minute, minute and a half. And so, yep. so yeah. And that's the difference between a TikTok and a YouTube video. Right? Yes. yes. You know, your audience is going to be totally different. For Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think that people expect when they come to TikTok, they expect to get small bites. Um, and everything that I have on Reels right now on Facebook Reels, it. it I think that's where my biggest audience is. And that's what they expect when they see a video for me, they expect it to just be a small bite um, of what they can expect when they go to this activity. Um, and so, so yeah, I definitely know that that is what the audience is expecting from me. Um, and I have set that expectation through years of 10 minutes left. That's all. Oh boy. I better get on this. Um, so um, here's what I want to say. Uh, to answer Lisa's question, I do um, all of my editing in CapCut. I do, um, it's an app that you can get on your phone or on your iPad. I may be on the computer too, but I normally use either my phone or my iPad. Um, I have all, when I take my videos, um, the, all that B-reel that you see, it all goes to the cloud. Um, I pull videos off the cloud into CapCut, and then I section them down into normally 1.5 to three second clips. Um, 1.5, 1.7, that seems to be the sweet spot. But then if I'm panning across a room or I'm trying to show you something bigger, I'll do a three second clip. Um, but otherwise, 1.5 to 1.7 clips. Um, your mind our minds are trained to just need to see things or we get bored and we're going to scroll on. Um, and so I always do short clips. Um, I add all my clips together in cap cut. And then um, I sometimes I'll put music there. If I know it's a song that will be universally found across all of my social media platforms. Um, otherwise I add the, um, I add the music in another you know, in the, in the, 
the um, app that I'm going to be posting it to, like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Um, a lot of people ask um, if there is one place that will post to all of the social media platforms. And I did at one point use that and it did not go very well um, because it was like that platforms know that you did that. And my viewership went down. Um, I think it's so weird. It, it, it's like there's the TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. It's smart enough to know what you've done. It knows that you were not personally in the app, spending time in the app. And so it doesn't want anything to do with your video. Um, so I post myself to every platform. I have the video on my phone, ready to go. I put it in TikTok. I add the music so we don't have any copyright issues. Um, and then maybe a, a caption at the front to let people know what this video is about. Um, and then I send it. I do the same thing over on Facebook. And then I do the same thing over on Instagram. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of what I do there. Um, I try to use popular trending music. Um, hashtags are not as big as they used to be, but I still use a few hashtags. Um, definitely kind of, um, get on TikTok and do a search of what's going on with hashtags. Um, and, and you'll see what to do there. Um, so since I'm so close to the end, I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to ask you guys what questions you guys have, what I can answer for you. Um, and then I definitely, uh, want to put my information in the chat. And if you guys have any questions at all, you guys can always, always, um, email me. I would love to further the conversation with any of you. Anybody got questions? I was going to ask, how often do you post? And I guess in the beginning, how long until you started to see trans trans um, traction? <laughs> yeah, because this was such a, because Branson is such a huge popular destination. Um, I immediately started getting 3,000 views, 5,000 mm -hmm. views um, on videos. I don't suspect it would be that way for a lot of people. Luke, how long have you been doing TikTok? About a year and a half. A year years. and a half, two years. What's your average view on? 230. 230 is his average viewer, is how many views his videos get. And he's been doing this a year and a half. Um, that is just the norm. But you got me through social media, yeah. right? Like he got me as a client and then I, you know, I'm in his downline in the XP. So I, I mean, you know, um, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What Thank else? You. Any other questions you guys got? I will say like, <clears throat> I've only done TikTok for a little while. I was a little resistant to it. I actually love the platform. I don't know why I was resistant to me. Now I don't want to do the other ones, <laughs> which is dumb. now I'm like, I don't want to do these because I'm opposite. Keeping something to 90 seconds is very hard for me. So I'm complete opposite of that. So like, I don't want to spend a bunch of time editing things and I do do short videos and I throw them out of my Instagram and Facebook stories. I find that to be more tedious than just up, just talking and uploading a video on TikTok though, without really any restriction. And I've only been doing this now probably for like, I don't know, just before the holidays, I think I have an average of 250, 300. There was like a week or two there that I was having 700, 800 views, which I thought was really interesting. And I haven't figured out why, because then it went down to my 300 again. But what's interesting is, and that's just in a few months time. But what I would say is and I don't have that many followers. I've just been really strategic about my followers. So a lot of my followers are people I already know that probably already follow me on Instagram or Facebook, but they just like using TikTok more. And it's just an easier way for me to be in front of them more frequently. So now what I'm noticing is it's just a tool for me to communicate with my other following in a way that they're now spending more time in this platform. It's easier for me. And I've gotten a tremendous amount of conversations in just a handful of months. So I, you know, so I want to grow <laughs> to more followers. And so I'm going to follow your lead and do everything that you're sharing here, Satyra. But I also have found it to be really interesting that it just has helped me go a little bit deeper in my already following, which I didn't yes. expect. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can create raving fans. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, who will just follow you and keep coming back for more. Definitely. Another thing I... Oh. Can you hear me? I don't no. know if everyone can hear me. Speak up. Okay, so Lisa's asking, Lisa Lister is asking a question, but okay. yeah, she's muted so we can't hear her. I'm muted. So yes. my, my thing is I can get 2,000, 3,000. My daughter got 
500,000 mm -hmm. views on, on one of my Instagram um, reels. Now, it doesn't matter. Everyone who talks about a percentage, you should have 10% of your following that are viewing. You know, okay, great, that's 10 people. And let's convert those people sure. into your clients. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to watch the numbers. Yeah, the numbers really don't matter at the end of the day. It's who are you converting and who are you bringing in to be your client or, you know, a raving fan or you're connecting with. Um, so definitely um, one of the things I always do at the end of every video is a call to action. I stop and I say, hit the like button if this was helpful and follow me for more things to do, see and eat in Branson, Missouri. That is what I add at the end of every single video um, because I want them to remember to do that. If they've watched to the end, chances are they're going to do that. Um, some videos I have done, not very often. I will do that right as we're getting to the juicy stuff. Like right mm -hmm. before I tell them, I'll give them a hook at the beginning and then like whatever I'm about to tell them that they want to hear about, I'm like, hey, can you do me a favor? Hit the like button and follow. And then I go on, you know? Um, and so that's always a good idea if you are a beginner to kind of do it more toward the front or, or the middle. Yeah. So, so yeah, great question. Anybody else, anything? Lisa? Yes. Hey, yeah. yeah. I had a question about, um, do you have any tips for profile settings? Profile settings. Like, you know, our, I know like it's really important on my, Instagram yeah. and things like that, that I have a LinkedIn or, you know, I, I'm not LinkedIn, but I have my link tree posted and things like that. Um, if you I have just... a LinkedIn or a website or something like that, always put that in there. I have a short-term rental that I like to drive people to. So that's what I have up on mine right now, but um, make sure that you put your keywords in your bio. That's really, really important. Um, like I put showing, I show people fun things to do see and eat in Branson vacation or, or in Branson, Missouri. And the reason mm -hmm. is when people type in, it's kind of like an SEO, when they type in things to do Branson, Missouri, the algorithm will grab my bio and they will know, oh, this person might be what they're looking for. This kind of content might be what they're okay. searching. Um, so definitely make sure that your bio has good SEO words, good, good searchable. Um, uh, yeah keywords that people are going to find I just I I don't even know I don't know how I find out when I started my TikTok yeah. um account but not very long ago and I don't have very many videos of course but um I'm just trying to become a little bit better at doing that again you know there's just all the different things and I've been trying to twist Jason's arm to get a great Branson Homes Yes. you know um yes. and make sure talk account sure, going so make sure when you set up your profile that you put the same picture on the new profile that you have whatever your logo is or whatever you use you need to put that same photo on instagram facebook tiktok they all need to be the same that way people will oh gosh yeah you know oh this that's is really I hard for old people because when you're old and you look at all those different profiles and then you see your picture on wait am i on my facebook am i on my facebook <laughs> profile my page my what am i where am i i don't know <laughs> so that makes me not very happy yeah. but yeah. i understand the consistency <laughs> of branding got it definitely well, yeah. we have to, it is now 1201 my time. It is uh, 201 your time. So we do need to wrap up our call. Um, however, you guys uh, go make sure that you find Satira on Facebook and on um, TikTok. Find me on Instagram because I need Okay, and find her on Instagram. Find her on all the above. <laughs> Good and job. Satira, can you Good put your contact today. information in the chat box yes. so that if anybody Our here job. might want to reach out to you, they can do that. Um, and I think we should come back and have a part two. And so those that want to come back, maybe start doing a little bit more on your TikTok, and, uh, we can come back and we'll see when Satira can come back and maybe we'll just open it up to more of a Q and a, and just kind of like, uh, start to share what we're doing, what we're having success with, what we're struggling with. And I bet you'd be willing to, um, 
answer some of those questions. So stay tuned. We'll do that for those of you that are continuing to grow your TikTok. But I think it's always great to meet people who are having success and follow them because we can see what they're doing and we can take things that will help us be better too. And so she's definitely one to follow. And um, if you're looking to invest in the Branson area, you've got a whole bunch of people on the screen that can help you. But Satira is there and she knows everything about Branson. All right, you guys, That's thanks right. so much for being here. We look Thank forward you guys. to appreciate you it. Wednesday. Thank you, Satira. Bye guys. Bye.